Hey everybody, welcome to Cut, Transform, Glue. In this week's video, I'm going to continue the build of the combat robot and this time I'm gonna work on the detailing process. This is the part 2 of a series of videos and if you missed the first one, you should check that out. I'm gonna put the link on the description box below. But before I begin the video, I would like to invite you guys to support the channel. You can subscribe because this helps a lot. You can also like the video. And if you want to go one step further, you can just donate me on coffee. Any small amount of money is very helpful at the moment. I can buy the inks and the supply stuff that I use to make the creations. So the link is in the description box below. And now on with the video. I wasn't quite happy with the flat front face on the robot's body, so I decided to remove the air vents from the front and create some more lines and depth. And I figured that just adding an extra corner here would make the model more interesting. And after the cutting and all that sanding, I could just glue a sheet of styrene to cover the hole. And then I could re-glue the air vents just slightly more centered. I'll start by drawing the lines where I feel they make more sense. And with a knife I can carve the first lines on the surface. And then with any sharp edge tool you can just carve and remove more material from this first line. As you can see there is a huge difference between working with styrene and MDF and to carve the lines on the MDF is way more challenging so you should have that in mind if you're planning to work with the MDF for models or robots. Now that I have most panel lines done, I can start adding some surface detail. In this case, I had some holes on the MDF sheets that I used and I decided just to glue some plastic balls just to make the model more interesting. In this part of the process, I'm just thinking about filling the gaps and just enriching the overall visuals of the robot. So I always look into my junk box and I look for pieces that could make sense and make the thing more interesting.
I have a huge collection of buttons and pieces from electronic junk and I can make a show and tell video if you guys want it. So just leave me a comment below if you want to see these types of videos here in the channel. The challenge here for me is to decide when to stop adding things to the model. And I know it may feel like I'm overwhelming the thing with details, but this is not the case, because once I prime it all down, it will feel a lot more flatter. I personally think that a combat robot should have rocket pods, so this is what I'm doing right now. I'm using this four hole thing here that I did on the laser cutter and I will use them as the tip of the rocket pods. And to portray the rockets I'm gonna use these BB gun balls. I'll sandwich them between each of these two pieces and that will give the illusion that the thing is inside the rocket pod. And on each side I will leave a hole empty, like if this rocket was shoot on the combat. And as always I'm adding electronic junk and pieces that give more detail to make the thing look more like an electronic or a mechanical thing. I made two of these rocket pods, one for each side and I'm going to fixate them on the side of the robot with this big screw.
but of course I'm gonna make a tiny cap just to cover the Philips head from this side of the pod so that will hurt the storytelling of the robot. This dead webcam will act like a radar with an array of sensors and cameras and communicators and I felt that the rocket spot were too close to the radar. So I decided to create a panel that would separate the two things. I also added some proud panels to the sides because I felt that the thing was a little too flat still. And I added a metal protection rail to the front because I feel like if you keep adding protections and rails and shields they can make the robot look more realistic and better tell the scale of the robot. And this is where I felt that I had a decent amount of details and that the robot was looking good. So I decided just to stop adding more things to the surface and started working on the ammunition box that will sit right here on the back. I've kept this Philips headset shell for a long time. This is a dead headset that I had years ago and I felt that the shape was perfect for a futuristic ammunition storage of a robot so I decided just to use it. I had salvaged these laser cut MDF rings some time ago and they were almost exactly the diameter of the headset so I decided to glue a couple of them together to make the ammo box taller.
and as I said before MDF has its limitations it is a cheap material and it cuts very nice on the laser cutter but it is not resistant at all and when I was bending this styrene sheet it started breaking apart but that's okay I will repair that later with some styrene on the sides And again, just as I did on the body, I start adding some details to the surface of this ammunition box. This right here is a pipe screen that I bought very cheap online some time ago. And now I have to create a structure where the ammo band would come out of the ammunition box and for that I'm using this laser cut acrylic. And now I'll glue the styling strip to the MDF that was breaking apart earlier on. And that will not only prevent the MDF from breaking even more, but it will also add more detail and make the thing more interesting. Then I added some panel lines, some details and glued some structure that would hold some wires that would come later on on the finishing process. And this is the finished and primed ammunition storage for the robot. And since the idea is to make a diorama for this robot, in the future I made two of these ammunition storage units. One of them will be sitting on a truck, a small truck that will be servicing the robot. And this is the scene I'm creating in my mind.
Now this video is becoming too long so I'll break the detailing process in two and I hope you guys liked what you saw here. Don't forget to subscribe, like the video, share this with your friends. If you really like what you saw here and you want to support me even more, you have the coffee link below. You can donate me small amounts of money that will help me buy the supply to make this stuff. But this is it for now, so as always, thanks for watching.